good, y'all. Um, so this is my Q and my first Q and A video. Um, I realized I never did like a, a video like this, so I just assume y'all don't know too much about me. So here we go. Um, oh, but before I uh, start with the Q and A, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's been subscribing, supporting, and uh, sharing the channel. Cause this is just something I do for fun. So um, it's nice to get support and. Uh, I like doing it also, so I just appreciate y'all for uh, all that. Alright, so first question. When did you discover your basketball talent? Funny story, I was never good <laughs> as a kid. I was just, you know, tall and skinny. Um, you can pretty much ask anybody. I was real clumsy. I guess I still am, but um, I guess maybe my junior year of high school, that's when I like you know, finally started to put it together. But <laughs> before then, I was not a very good basketball player at all. But uh, I did, I did work out a lot. And I think that that helped me just get in the frame of mind of like the no days off thing. I worked out every morning, 5 a.m. during the summer, like just by myself, not with a trainer or anything. So um, I think that really helped my development. Um, and then, yeah, I guess my junior year, at Glasgow is when I really started to put it together. Question is, so how did you gain muscle? Um, this is interesting also because when I came to college, I was uh, real skinny still from high school, and then I, I gained bad weight. So I gained more fat than I would say muscle to start off because I was just eating, and then I. Uh, then I really worked on, um, you know, getting my weight up, but, you know, having a good weight and uh, muscle. So I really watched how I ate. Um, a, big, a big thing was I, was, I used to be a, a big juice drinker, uh, cranberry juice, uh, V8, pretty much any juice. I was a big juice drinker. And, you know, our strength coach last year, Coach uh, George Green, he really taught me the importance of like just water, straight water. And um, like I, after drinking so much water, I just felt so much better. And that's something I still carry me today. You can ask pretty much anybody. The only thing I would drink is water. So, um, and along with lifting and working out, um, really helped me put on muscle and the good muscle that I need, as you, as you can see, some good muscle, so. Um, that wasn't all me. I had to credit Stony Brook for most of that. The next question is, uh, how many times a day do you work out? Um, okay, so during the summer before I got to Luxembourg, it was twice a day for sure, no matter what. Um, whether that be, you know, basketball in the morning and then cardio at night or lift in the morning, basketball at night, some variation of the two, lifting, cardio, or basketball. So um, uh, now I'm here, uh, I would say still twice a day. Um, I usually, we have practice at night at uh, 8 p.m. So I always in the morning either go lift, cardio, or work out on my, on my actual game. So still twice, um, it's just, just like the standard, I guess. I guess, uh, you know, you gotta do more than what you do in practice, obviously, to be successful. So uh, twice is pretty much the standard. What are you most excited for in Luxembourg? Um, well, everything has been great so far. <laughs> Can't even lie, like this place is great. Um, they actually said a lot of Americans stay over here for more than one year, so um, I can see why this place is great. The people are great, the food is great, and um, just everything is great. Although the streets are really small, and you have to parallel park pretty much every every time you park. It has to be parallel. So that's something that I got to get used to. <laughs> All right, next question is, what made you start a clothing line? Oh, uh, as you can see. Um, what made me start a clothing line? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> this is, I don't know. This is something I never imagined I would, I would be doing. Um... I guess like for, for seeing like um, I had shirts made for my family and a lot of people liked them. And I was like, you know, I like it too, obviously. And, you know, 
and the, the, the model means a lot to me, like the noise off model means a lot to me, so I said, you know, maybe people will support this, and turns out people really liked it, they really support it, um, and it's, it's good stuff, you should have had, it's good stuff, so, um, uh, yeah, more stuff will be coming out soon, uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll have another a hat drop, hopefully, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Next question is, uh, what is your best achievement? Um, I guess my best achievement would be graduating from college, even though in my household, my mom has a master's, my sister has two, I believe, and I believe my brother has two masters already also, so, like, I guess for them it's just like, oh, that's just, you know, chump chains, but for me, it's a big accomplishment for me because, especially where I'm coming from, uh, a lot of people don't even, you know, make it to college let alone graduate, so that was a uh, special for me. that was a special day for me. Um what's your shoe size? So in basketball in basketball sneakers I wear a fourteen because I like a little bit of room. But if I'm just walking around the sneakers, I'm a thirteen. Is favorite sneakers to play in and favorite sneakers you have. Um my favorite sneakers to play in, let me see. Uh either these Curry fours, Cur uh, Curry's are so comfortable, or Curry threes. Curry's are so comfortable, um, and they're light, high top. So those are definitely my favorite sneakers to play in. Uh, my favorite sneakers I have, I didn't bring all my sneakers with me, but I have uh, Thunder fours. Those are probably my favorite sneakers. But uh, with me, uh, these are some of my favorite. Um, just versatile, they go with anything pretty much. And also these, the Air Jordan 1 KO Shadow. I feel like these are uh, very slept on because they're, they're the KO version, but as you can see, still very tough and uh, cost less than the OG. So I'm balling on the budget over here. <laughs> Uh, how tall are you and how much do you weigh? I'm 6'7". I'm 6'8". When I get my 8 hours of sleep. And I weigh uh, probably, I don't, I haven't weighed in in a couple weeks, but probably around 230, 235, around that area. My next question. Uh, will you marry me? Uh, what Drake say? I still got like 7 years of doing what I want. <laughs> Um, our next question is, uh, how is the food in Luxembourg compared to America? Bro, the food is fire. The food is so fire. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna drop a, I'm gonna drop a, a food montage right now. <laughs> coaches, Coach Malik, Coach uh, Breon, they influenced me the most, pretty much taught me everything I, everything I know now, and back then everything I needed to know, and um, they were real strict on me, and uh, on, all, on all, the whole team, like in, uh, in eighth grade, uh, it was like the, the fourth quarter, like the last uh, marking period, I guess you call it, and I had <clears throat> uh, four or five Fs. Just that marking period. I passed like the eighth grade, but just that marking period, I had like four or five Fs. And um, you know, later that year we went to Nationals in Florida, and they they shut me down. Like I couldn't play, couldn't practice. They still made me go though, <laughs> so I had to watch. But I couldn't play, couldn't practice. And uh, I just remember like that being some of the worst times of, of my childhood. Just 
going to nationals in Florida and not being able to play at all. And knowing, like, if I would have played, like, uh, I would have made a difference in uh, the results of the games and stuff like that. So, you know, from from young, I've been with them since I was nine. And, you know, they taught me the values of life, uh, being a young man, and, uh, you know, the importance of education and, you know, all these life lessons that I've learned over the years through basketball and, you know, just through everyday life uh, from them. So i got to give a big shout-out to the OGs. Um, what made you start a YouTube channel? Uh, you know, I, I don't, you know, I guess I was, you know, doing what every kid does on YouTube, uh, trying to f figure out how life is overseas because I've heard it's like this and I've heard it's like that. So uh, I just wanted to know really what it was like and maybe somebody with a YouTube channel that's overseas uh, would explain that to me, but I didn't find anybody, so... Like, I, I guess I wanted to be that guy that shares my experiences um, overseas as a as a basketball player. You know, with people that are thinking about playing overseas or don't know if they want to or don't know if it's worth it. Um, so, I just, I guess I wanted to be that person. And it, it's fun to document these things, uh, have the memories that's, uh, that I always been on YouTube. So, my next question. Um, how do you introduce yourself, or I guess this is introduce yourself in French. <laughs> All right, uh, bonjour, je m'appelle Tarell. Um, je suis américain. Uh, je suis un peu français. Uh, straight, straight pull, français. Um, je suis grand. Um, je joue au basket pour Solva. I guess if I was to introduce myself, that's all I would pretty much say. And then, usually that's when people would start speaking English to me because <laughs> they they know I don't speak that much French. Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, advice for younger people. Hmm. I guess if I was talking to my younger self, I would say um, make sure you're focused. You know, don't wait t until it's too late to you know be be locked in, be locked in from the jump. Because there's a good quote that says you never have to get ready if you stay ready. So don't wait to like me, don't wait till you get four F's in the eighth grade to really lock in on your schoolwork and you know, start working out more and extra. Uh be locked in from the jump. And also, um, you don't need a trainer to work out. You don't need a camera in the gym to work out. All you need is space and opportunity. And um there's always something you can do to better yourself, so don't, you know, just because the trainer can't go to come to the gym and work you out or you don't have money to pay the trainer to work you out, don't let that stop you from getting better. You know, go on YouTube, look at what the trainers do in their workouts and just simply just copy what they do. Um, there's always something you can do to get better. Even if you don't have a gym access, you can always do ball handling. You know, even if you don't have a ball, you can do push-ups, sit-ups, you can run outside. There's so many things you can do to get better. Don't don't limit yourself because you don't have a trainer, you don't have the, the money to pay for a trainer. There's always ways to get better and better yourself. So I think those are my two my two biggest things that I would tell younger people, and especially my younger self if I could. So uh, let me see, let me make sure. Yep, that's it for the questions. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And again, I thank y'all for the, the 100 subscribers. Um, and I hope y'all enjoyed it. And I'm going to see y'all real soon.